why is the Skip Barber so difficult to drive when it's supposed to be a beginner's car is one question I once saw asked on an internet. I mean, it is a car for learning, but the car itself is specifically designed to teach you correct driving habits by not being easy to drive. And among those driving habits being the correct application of weight transfer. Now weight transfer isn't exclusively a driving technique, it's, well, it's the laws of physics and drivers will be doing it whether they know it or not. Just driving out of the pit lane they'll be doing weight transfer as the laws of physics demand it. So really, weight transfer should just be called... driving. Now I'm going to try and avoid getting into the rabbit hole that is physics on this video for two reasons. One, this series is made specifically to give you the basics and give you a starting point with which to read more if you want to do so. And secondly, well, I'm not Neil deGrasse Tyson. I barely got a C grade GCSE maths. Plus my background is in audio engineering, so sound waves and absorption coefficients? Sure. Newtonian law? What the fuck is that? So this car is just sitting in a garage, doing sweet nothing. Gravity is acting down on the car, the floor is stopping the car from falling into the centre of the earth, and besides those two forces acting on the car, there is nothing else going on. Because the car isn't moving, there are no forces acting on the car from the front, the rear, the sides, the corners, and so on. No forces other than the downward pull of gravity are doing well, anything here. But as soon as the car begins to move, the forces acting upon said car go out of the window. As the car accelerates, the weight goes to the rear wheels, and under braking, the weight goes to the front wheels. And I'll give you two super extreme cases for weight distribution being sloshed around. The first is top fuel dragsters. These things can accelerate from 0 to 3 billion miles an hour in about a second or something ridiculous like that. The weight is transferred to the rear of the car so violently the car wants to take off, so they put those bits of scaffolding on the back to stop it from doing so. The other example is riding along on a bicycle or on a motorbike. If you hit the front brakes too hard while travelling too fast, the front wheel stops moving while the rest of the bike is still moving forwards, with you on top. The weight is shifted forward so suddenly the bike does a front flip and you end up going over the handlebars. So under acceleration and braking the weight will be moved around, albeit in a less extreme manner. Now you might have heard Jeremy Clarkson on Top Gear going, this car has 50-50 weight distribution for handling, and stuff like that. And racing cars will try to have as much of a 50-50 weight distribution as possible, although some more high downforce cars will shift it about a tiny bit to get more front or rear, or you know, 52-48, or something thereabouts. But either way, as soon as that car starts moving, your 50-50 weight distribution doesn't exist. For ease of explanation, I've set up the graphics on this model to be 50-50 in terms of the weight distribution, even though the actual car itself probably doesn't. As the car accelerates, weight is going to the rear as the weight shifts. This weighs the rear down and will aid traction coming out of corners. Then when you hit the brakes, in some of the more low-tech series, you'll actually see the front of the car dip down as the weight is sent in the opposite direction. That weight is now on the front tyres and will aid with turn-in, and the driver can make small adjustments to generate turn-in or when getting on the power. And obviously there will be roll in conjunction with the pitch and there will also be yaw and stuff like that. And this is when the car goes through a left-handed corner, weight will be shifted to the right-hand side tyres, and vice versa. You don't want a car with 70% of its weight over the front wheels because the car will be super difficult to drive when going through a quick corner. And that's something that can be easily demonstrated in a formula style car. That crash happened because all the weight was on the front end and nothing was weighing the rear down. And downforce is basically just weight created by rushing air over the aero parts of the car. 
That weight on the front or rear wheels pushes the tyre into the ground and creates grip, and you can do this at home right now by lightly running your finger down your sleeve, and then doing it again but pushing a bit harder. And when you do push a bit harder, the friction levels are higher, your finger's got more grip on your sleeve. And weight transfer is essentially creating grip through shifting weight back and forth with the throttle and the brake. Is the car unresponsive on turning? Lift off a bit, get that weight over the front end. But don't do it too much, because you'll create what happened in the F1 car. Too much weight on the front axle will cause the rear to brake traction and spin you around, or what is more commonly known as lift off oversteer. It's the same when you want to accelerate. Feed it, instead of mashing the throttle and you won't be asking the tyres to do too much with not enough weight over the rear. And this is something that happened a lot in cars like the Skip Barber, the Mazda MX-5s and Formula Ford, and it can actually influence setup choice. If the front suspension is too stiff, the weight can't be transferred to the front efficiently enough under braking, and it will affect the turning ability of the car. Similarly, if the suspension is too soft at the front, the rear end can lose grip, as the rear wants to overtake the front in the same way the push bike did when you put the front brakes on too aggressively. Front wheel drive BTCC cars do this very often because all of the weight is at the front, and as the name suggests, the driven wheels are also at the front and not the rear, so the rear tyres are just being taken along for the ride by comparison. And if the rear is too stiff, you can't get the power down as the car can't squish into the road. Too soft, and you have the top fuel dragster effect as the front lifts up. Weight transfer is the quest to create balance when driving, and it's something that real and virtual drivers will do without thinking, but now you'll have a beginner's insight into the science behind it. And there are more guides out there online with all the maths and algebra and stuff like that, but that's way too advanced for me, so I'll just stick to right foot do this, left foot do that, steer with thing in front of you. So that's a quick beginner's guide to the witchcraft that is weight transfer and why drivers will consciously and subconsciously be shifting weight around to maximise grip. If you've learned something here today, be sure to like the video, and for more stuff like this, click subscribe with the bell on so you get all the latest. Big thanks as always go out to the patrons of this channel via Patreon, and if you wish to join them with supporting me at a more personal level, just join in in all the Discord stuff and social media stuff, I'll leave all the relevant links for you in the description box. I'll actually be putting this weight transfer stuff to good use in the iRacing Bathurst 12 hours tomorrow, so keep checking the channel for the live stream of that whenever I'm in the car. So until that stream, or just until the next video really, I've been Ada Maud, have a cracking day wherever you live in the world, and I'll see you all again soon for another video, or just until the live stream of the Bathurst 12 hour. So until then, goodbye.